<laughs> I want to do one intro where I'm like, Manny and B. Obviously, B means Brooke Blurton. Blurton. And then, you're, and then you're like, well, I'm Maddie, but that just stands for Maddie Mills. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a fucking funny. Okay. <clears throat> that was so funny, babe. Welcome to Not So PG, a podcast for the girls, the gays and theys, or anyone really who doesn't take themselves too seriously, but at the same time might need to hear some hard truths or maybe even a gentle reminder. We consider ourselves your First Nations queer parents, you know? We'll sit down weekly to unpack our experiences navigating the world of being First Nations, celebrating queerness, finding one's identity, understanding race, all whilst living in the public eye. You may think you know who we are, but do you know where we came from? You don't know nothing, baby. Um, I'm Maddie Mills. My pronouns are he and him. And I'm Brooke Blurton. My pronouns are she and her. And firstly, we'd like to pay our respects to the custodians of the land on which we record this podcast. For me, that's the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, that's the Rogeri, Woiwurrung and Boonarongbu people of the Kula Nation. All right, B, let's get into it. All right, this episode is a little bit different. We put out to our followers um, a little Q&A and a little anonymous questions. I got some spicy cues. What did you get, Maddie? Um, I had people asking what size my budu was and um, that's where I stopped answering the questions. <laughs> I did see that. The little zucchini, little eggplant emoji was thrown around a little bit. Yeah. Everyone's so curious to know how big They're your budu nasty, is. nasty, girl. They are but, so um, nasty. <laughs> I will tell you by the end of the episode. <laughs> Jokes. In jokes, inches or gotcha. centimetres, no. I'd like to have some gotcha. <laughs> Kidding. You're like my brother. It's like my... my I, I don't want to know how big your budu is, honestly. Yeah, and if anyone doesn't terrified. know what budu means, it means <laughs> your penis. Um, so right, I had some spicy cues. People asking me what favorite, what my favorite sex position is. Would I be in a polyamorous relationship? Mm. What do I like about the feminine body? All types of cues. Cute. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, should we answer some? Why not? Let's get into it. Should we do another little jingle there? Like yep. a little, like, what, what, what about like a little spicy, like, <laughs> Ooh. First one, and this was asked about ten times, is how tall am I? Yeah. Cute. Look, well, I'm a little bit of a short ass. Um, mm-hmm. My grandfather's Malaysian, so I get my petite little frame from his side. I'm five foot two on a good day with heels. I'm actually five foot one, really, but 157 centimeters. So very, very tiny. So you are you taller than Kylie Minogue? With similar height. Yeah, I thought so. Um, well, I'm six foot. And you know what they say about six foot? What? Two feet. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaving that hanging I don't there. know what they say about six foot, but that's I'm six foot one, I think. Yeah, love that for you. I love, I'm so jealous. Um, what's the difference between black and black? So one with a C and one without? Um, one is a colour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a this is a probably a deeper, more meaningful is what we use black I would say a bit more of an empowering term because obviously black has been used as a very discriminative racial slang yeah yeah totally um I agree with you I think that um sometimes black has been weaponized that word yeah Um, and our way of spelling black without the c is us kind of taking back that power and using it as our own word um and we find power in using b-l-a-k over b- using B L A C K. Totally, so, it's yeah. um, taking it back. It's like ownership. Yeah, so that's why we use it. There's not really a technical ma- reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's more just an ownership. It's sort of like any word that has been weaponized in the past um, against um, you know people and, and groups of p- people and communities. They yeah. um, find a way to be able to take it back so that it can't be used against them. Exactly. And that's, I think that's what the community has done, and I love it. 
Yeah, we're taking on the colonizer's language and flipping it on its head and using our own words. We're getting <laughs> rid of the C, the colonizer. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next question is, how did you come out? Do you have a good coming out story? I don't. I, I wrote about this in my book. Like, I didn't really have... <laughs> how sad, Nyon. No. Um, I didn't have anyone to really come out to. The people that I came no. out to were my footy community. And basically, when I said and told them that I had a girlfriend, they were like, we know, we don't care. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't, any, it wasn't a surprise, was it? No. They were like, we knew that you were gay. We knew you like guys, girls, you know, we just knew that, that you were just Brooke. And I think my only sort of coming out thing was taking my girlfriend to my family barbecue and being like, everyone's like, oh, so nice of you to bring your friend. And I was like, no, guys, this is my girlfriend. Um, oh, and they I were love like, that. cute. That is it. I know it sounds so like, you know, I think a lot of people have different coming out stories, but that's the base of some. Well, <laughs> uh, mine is the polar opposite. I did a very Maddie Mills um, thing and came out on the front of a magazine. So I came out. Um, Was this the budget smuggler one? Yeah. So it's oh, star, I have a screenshot the of that. The Star Observer um, magazine approached me back in 2014 to be the first ever um, Aboriginal um, person on the cover of their magazine. I love that. And um, it was their first ever NAIDOC edition of the spread. And I said yes. And I had so many questions from family. I was, you know, 19 years old. And everyone was wondering what was happening in my life. I was being a bit cryptic. And... Um, and We love we love being cryptic. I love we? it. Like, you know, here's the breadcrumbs. You figure it out for yourself. <laughs> um, Leave them as humans. <laughs> so basically, I covered, yeah, covered the Star Observer with a very bold statement of gay, black and proud. And that was my way of coming out. <laughs> I sent it to um, all of my siblings, the nine siblings that I have. It's super hot. I was very ripped back in the day. But yeah, it don't look like that now. So, you know, don't go flood in the basement. I mean, the DMs. <laughs> this is where I, where I actually um, discovered Maddie. I thought he was like... I was already thought he was a straight fella. Obviously, uh, that's not screaming straight, but um, I... The, the title, Gay, Black and Proud, I don't think that gives, <laughs> I'm straight. Yeah, but I like was like, I don't know, I don't give a yeah. fuck about anyone. I was like, yeah, yeah. he's hot. I'm yeah, he's hot. I'm going to shoot my shot. No, kidding. Uh, um, but yeah, I, that, that's how I came out. And, um, and then I sent the article and the magazine to all of my family and we're like, here, if you want to know, here's your answer. Okay, um, will you actually sing G Flip? Ooh. This is a constant message that I get. Now, G Flip and I are good friends, and their cousin actually works for me as my personal assistant, and we all connect and talk, but G Flip and I, we just had a little fling, and they were busy doing music, and I wasn't looking for a relationship. They weren't either, and we just kind of, that was it. Like, that's it. Yeah, just a you know? past sliding doors moment. I am still friends with them and super supportive of their music career. I love their new song, um, Waste of Space. I think it really connects with non-binary people or anyone in general who's ever felt like they're a waste of space. So go listen. Is it true that they're dating some hottie from LA that was on, like, a Sunset Listing or whatever it's called? Yeah, Chris Do- Shell. From Selling Sunset. Selling Sunset. That's the show. Yep. Yeah. I know. I'm like, okay, that was an upgrade, but whatever. <laughs> um, please. It's a it's a sidestep, babe. <laughs> okay, let's just run through these quick. These are all batchy ones, and then yep. we'll just get them all. See you later. Have I spoken to Jamie Lee? Yes, I have spoken to Jamie Lee. We're on mutual terms. We're not friends like we used to be. Um, generally because when you come out of The Bachelorette or The Bachelor... Oh, I always feel like I'm like the bad guy. I'm like the worst, you know, regardless of what you do, you're always going to be casted as like this bad, big bad guy. And I felt like I had been most respectful for everyone in that season. But regardless of what you do, it's just, yeah. So I have just tried to be respectful and avoid anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is that... I have spoken to Jamie. We're okay. We're not besties. Um, and then that's it. Move on. Yeah. I haven't spoken to Was her. Is that okay? So you know. <laughs> <laughs> have you spoken to Jamie Lee? No. I think she's really beautiful. And I think, yeah. you know, if we had our time again, who knows? Do you have a relationship where it's constantly like people were like, how is so-and-so? Oh my God, what happened? 
Oh, you know what? Back in the day, back in 1945, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> to be honest, I have been in a relationship for five years, so it feels like I've been off the market and my cab light's been off for, like, centuries. The reality is, is that I had two... <laughs> relationships before this relationship. One was with a female and one was with a male. I haven't stayed in contact with either of them because that's not of interest. No, <gasps> that's mean. I just, yeah, I just sort of moved on, you know. Are you a person, okay, because I, I, I feel like you and I mm. are similar, obviously, in our personalities. So once you cut ties, are you just like dust your hands off? It is what it is. You move on. Yeah, I find it hard to cut ties, I think, like I really do. But once I do cut the ties, I think that there's only one reason you cut ties is so that you can move on. It's not to stay, you know, established in a relationship with them. So I think, like, for me personally, I'm someone who just does want to move on. I'm a befriender of my exes. Yeah, okay. I have, I've so never I... been friends with any of my exes, actually. Oh, yeah. I spoke to mine literally, like, the other day. Oh, and wow. Because, like, he's sending me photos that I've got in storage at his storage for my book. Yeah. And I was like, oh, thanks, Legend. Like, how yeah. are you? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, and, like, my ex-girlfriends, we're all friends. I love that. I had very young relationships, so like my two, first two relationships are when I was, you know, you know, a baby, a, a baby. Little so baby. for me, like I've only really had one serious relationship. I've never spoken to any of my exes. Let's just say that they. Yeah, um, can you keep this shorter? What? what? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by one of these questions, and I have to bring it up immediately. Yeah. You have absolutely stunning feet. Thoughts on dating a man with a foot fetish? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your thoughts on this. I want to know everything. I want to know everything. Okay. Would I date someone with a foot fetish? Fuck no. Fuck no. Why? That's <sighs> like. I don't know. I hate feet. Do you? Right. I hate feet. I like. I, I guess because I've played footy my whole life. Foot. I've always had like. Yeah. The word bung. foot sounds awful. <laughs> 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 Footy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, foot with the footy. Yeah. No, I, I just feel like I have like athletes' feet. You know what I mean? Bunions. All right, I got bunions. All damn right, it. Mr. Tumnus. <laughs> All right, Mr. Tumnus. Um, bunions and Tumnus <laughs> don't go together. Yeah, he has um. Hooks. All right. Like okay. trotters. Favorite sex position. All right, let's go there. What's your favorite sex position, Maddie? Um, it depends if I'm topping or bottoming. I like to be in control. So if I'm at bottom, I would much prefer to be like on top. On the side, leg up is hot. Whatever that position Ooh, is. Yeah, that's a vibe. What is that position? Leg up. <laughs> <laughs> leg up. No, I don't know. But um, that one Legs up. To... Le- legs yeah. 11. <laughs> I've been watching, speaking of this, I've been watching on How to Make a Sex Room. It's fucking great on Netflix. I started that last week. If I could have a sex room, I think it would be one of those like um, straddle um, benches so you can use it for all different positions. Because sometimes the bed is just like the bed, you know? So like being able to have different levels of positions or oh, and a mirror. I'd like to see myself yeah, in action. Yeah, I was, I was going to say <laughs> one full wall is a mirror. I would have... Like a curved lounge, so you can kind of like get bent over <laughs> on the lounge, <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know something spicy. What is the okay? This bad. is another question. What have you been desperate enough to use as lube? If you say butter, I'm gonna fucking delete, <laughs> delete, delete, delete myself from this conversation. Not Alex. Not Alex. Don't. Not Alex. Stop. Shut up. <laughs> Stop. Um, margarine. The two dollar big tub of margarine. Yeah. No. Um, what is? Yeah. No, I only massage oil, mm. right? But it's actually the best. So I haven't dabbled into the other alternatives. I must admit. Okay. Well, I. Not that. Not that. Um. Not that ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word. Um, well, um, I will have to admit that I've used moisturising cream and it is so good. I know like, it's probably not good for you, like, to be all up in there. <laughs> it, were, it was, like, the best consistency. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about, about like, Vaseline moisturiser. Yeah, yep. We're talking about... You, you're spot on. Vitamin E moisturiser. spot on. It's the Vaseline... Cocoa mo- butter. Cocoa butter. I know it. Babe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
cocoa <laughs> blue butter. like a Mediterranean island in there. Well, it felt <laughs> the like cocoa it. Butter. It felt like it. It was like I was on holiday. My mind went <laughs> to another place. <laughs> take me to the Maldives. Yeah, take Maldives. me to <laughs> take me to the Maldives. I'm going to deep dive into this asshole. No I'm kidding. <laughs> We are a top, I guess. Or yeah. Bottom, whatever day you choose. Yeah. Well, you know what? Ooh, I was definitely um, living my top fantasy that day because normally I use like you know a silicon-based lube, but then if I'm in the shower, that changes as well because you need water-based lube because otherwise it just sort of doesn't work. Did you know that? Do you know what? I'm not a big one for shower sex. I yep. just don't feel like it gives me that emotional, central connection, like, the yeah. Way. Like, yeah, if you want to be fucking railed, shower's the first place. I do have a shower before sex all the time. Yes. There is not one time that I have not had sex without having a shower first. It's just one of my things. I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah. But mind you, if I'm at someone else's house, how, like, if I'm going out to, you know, hook up with someone, yep. you know, a little booty call, mm-hmm. I make sure that I shower before though as well. Yeah, nice. I think for me, the shower is more like having sex with myself and my dildo friend. <laughs> Oh, actually, I had a friend come over recently and I had to quickly run up because they were going to have a shower because we just went to the beach. Yeah. And I had to quickly run up to the shower yeah. and make sure that nothing was left in, in the there. shower. I've, yeah, I've made that mistake yeah, before. Just, you know, Paul be at work for 14 hours. I'm at home, you know, living by myself and um, had had a, had a great time <laughs> in the shower. He comes home and he gets, gets into the shower ready to wash off the blood and guts from being a paramedic and he sees a good friend stuck to the wall. <laughs> Oops. Ha, mine's called Richie. Hey, Richie. <laughs> hey, Richie. Um, I don't have a name for mine. That's what we should do. What? And you know what? I actually want to go. What's your name for your children? Yeah, I really want to toys. go sex um, toy shopping. Like I was talking to my friend about it on the weekend. I'm like, I really want to go and like actually get a good haul of stuff and like be more adventurous. Because I'm, I've, I'm someone who hasn't really explored that much when it comes to sex toys. But I've been oh, watching the okay. Netflix show. How to build a sex room, and now my mind is going crazy. I'm like Ooh. having a little dabble, having a little dabble. Yeah, but we'll I don't like that. pain. So if anyone's gonna, you know, offer me a whip to buy, I'll be like, nah, can't do it. Not my jam. I'm not no, a fucking no, no, horse. No. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a horse dick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ballet. <laughs> oh my god. Nah, jokes. jokes this jokes. is very not so PG for a Tuesday morning. Sorry, but far out. <laughs> Wow, it went from lube to naming dildos. I love that transition for us. Yes. What What's the name of yours? Uh, Henry the Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, no so it? I bought mine from Henry. Uh, from, I Henry mine from-, from Henry down the road. <laughs> He's just selling them on the side of the street. <laughs> Get your dildo. Your dildo's here. 50 cents dildos. a dildo. <laughs> no, okay, if we say you bought Mind them from you, Henry the Octopus, the Wiggles are going to sue us, so let's not go there. Um, the Wiggles should have a brand of condoms. I mean, I'm going to do all those. <laughs> Safe sex, no regrets from the Wiggles. Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Where you no, got I bought from? mine from Honey Burdette, and so it came with a name. Oh. So the strap-on but didn't have a name, obviously nameless, because mm. that doesn't need a name. But the actual, like dildo that goes with the strap on it was called Richie which I felt really uncomfortable <gasps> calling it Richie because it oh just my reminded God, just me Richie off The Bachelor oh I had flashbacks of a Richie oh you have had a Richie no I have not had a Richie and mm-hmm. I don't think I will have a Richie ever in my life okay. other than my dildo well I have a good flashback of somebody called Richie and my best friend has also experienced this Richie on a different, in a very different um, time, but it was only recently that we had a conversation about this Richie. <gasps> yeah, nice. Well, on that note, have you, this is a good one because I feel like, oh my God, I have a guilty pleasure with this one. Have you ever brought other sex toys into mm-hmm. your new relationship Oh, ones that you've used in the past with previous yeah. relationships. Oh, for me, no. I feel like by then the dildo, like if it was in my relationship, it would be like five years old, like with it away. I like, wouldn't even do it. job. Very true. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But, um, <laughs> and I'm not somebody who has owned a lot of, um, you know, before this relationship, actually, I don't think I ever owned one. So like I've only just started to really get into sort of the sex toy fantasy world. <laughs> So you're like 
like amateur. Yeah, like I'm. Amateur, I would say beginner. I'm amateur. <laughs> yeah, I literally have like the one levels of or two. I have two sex toys. That's it. Yeah, just two. Um, How about you? Have you like <clears throat> used on multiple people in different eras of your life? <clears throat> yes, she has. I have. <laughs> I have. I got my first ever toy in my first relationship. My girlfriend, ex girlfriend, and I, we bought it together. And then that kind of carried into my second relationship because when we broke up, I still had it. Oh, okay. But then it got chewed by my dog. So oh. I, had to, I had to go out and purposely buy a new Free a new ribbing. One. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was just so embarrassed. The little shithead. Like, this is not even Cobra. This is like my previous dog who was like an absolute terror. Yeah. And the thing was, he it was in the drawer. It was fine, tucked away, like where it should be. And he just decided that he was just going to open the drawer and just yep. let himself at it. And I came home and I was so annoyed because it was probably more expensive than the first one. Right. Because they're not cheap. No. Like, for something that, yeah, I don't know, like... It's quite expensive, hey, especially good ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good quality, high review ones. Yeah. You're fucking, you're paying like. It's not the dollar twenty carrot from. An Coles. arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. You kill me. Um, you know, I have now a strap on that has been used a couple of times. Nice. Can I ask you a, a question? Yes. Have you ever pegged a guy? <laughs> Look at her. She's like, can I say it? Can I say it? I don't want to out him. No, you don't have to tell me who it is, but have you done it? No, but like, I know that they will listen and they'll know. Yes, I have. (laughs) That's that's kind of hot though, to be honest. To mind you, like, it escalated really really quickly. I'm not even going to go into it because it's a short version of this. But like, (laughs) you know, I've always been a bit more of a dominant person. Mm Mm-hmm in the way that I like things. And I feel like it was just, you know, it just escalated. And it was a vibe. I actually enjoyed it. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, you have to li- relive one day of your life forever. Which day do you choose and why? Ooh, that's a good one. Whoever sent in that, I love it. No, because I'm going to go really, really fucking sad. Oh. I'm yeah. I'm going to take it on a, a downwards little sad moment. Yeah. It will be the last hug that I've ever had with my mum. I would relive that moment over and over. Like, that would be just the last day that I ever got to see her. Yeah. Sorry. We went, got, we went from one scale to no, most. No, underst- to- oh, <laughs> come on. Understandable. Like, that, that's, that moment is, you know, priceless, right? I just, so- I get so sad that she will never be... At my wedding and the day that I have my first child. So I'm like, mm, it gets me. I just want to like, oh, you know, that's why you should always make sure that you tell your loved ones that you love them. Yeah. And they can be gone. But I would relive that moment. And even my Nana, if I had the chance of reliving two days. <laughs> yep. One day. Yeah. Uh, what would you, what would you choose? You know, I'm going to keep it at your level too. Cause um, I think it actually is the day that I found out my dad was still alive. And I think it would be the day that we actually met him because there was such a long corridor in where we were at the welfare in um, Parramatta. There was this long corridor and they brought him out at one end and us out of a room at the other. So the the moment of running to him and then giving him a cuddle in that corridor, I thought... Don't worry, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah, uh, like it was like, it's such a good memory in my head of like seeing him at the end of the corridor and then just running and meeting and cuddling. Like that was, yeah. And then we just went to the park after that and um, he brought us donuts and we went to the park and kicked around a footy for like an hour. And, and that would um, have been the best day It was the life. best and we have photos of that day because the lady took photos and, yeah, we just all look so happy. Yeah. That's, yeah, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And I no wonder you want to live, relive that. That would yeah. have been a, such a, also like, so confusing at the same time. Yeah, like like, and you know what? I, this I whole was, time. Remember how I said I was a little detective? I looked at his arm to see his tattoo because I saw the <laughs> tattoo in a, in a photo. I was like, you would. when I meet this when I meet this man, if he's like, if he doesn't have he that tattoo, he's it. not my dad. <laughs> 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 and I thought it was a spider. So in the photo, it looked like a spider, but it was actually like a scroll, like a, a ah. paper scroll. 
So it was oh, like yeah. on his arm, but in the photo it looked like a spider. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's not the spider. But the, obviously it was like the tattoo. <laughs> it just you looked say, like a spider. You say detective, but do you feel like you're just so sceptical yeah, of people? Yeah, 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 totally. Okay, so I've been obviously reading that book Driven and mm-hmm. it constantly says like there's a particular driven type that they trust people, but they're just constantly like sceptical. I want to like, read I this feel book. Like yeah, you really should. Yeah. It's really good. It just fits our personalities so well because we've been, you know, I guess brought up so quickly mm. and we've like, you know, kind of had to be like adults when we're being younger. But then there's this part of it that you, no matter who you meet and why they come into your life, you're like, mm, do I trust you? Yeah. I'm constantly like that yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like there's only very, very few people I'm like, I trust you with my whole life and yeah. I don't need to worry about you doing anything. But even yeah. in the back of my mind, I'm like, you could do anything to hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a fear. It's crazy. Like, yeah. But like you, even in that moment as a kid, you're like, this is my dad. Yeah. I'm like, and you're like. Hmm. Yeah. Are you my dad? Mm. Are you? Yeah. Are and, you? and he had dreadlocks. Show me your tattoo. But Show had, me your arm. <laughs> yeah. He had dreadlocks when we were little. And then when we met him, he had no hair, like shaved off. So it was like, it. He. I knew, as soon as I saw him, I knew it was him. But that whole thing of, is the tattoo there? Why doesn't he have his dreadlocks? Like. <laughs> yes. But anyway, yes, yeah, yes, that, would yes. Be, that would definitely be the moment. All right, well, the next question on our list is, how did you meet your best friend, Sam? So this is obviously directed to you. I haven't met Sam, but I've spoken to him over the phone while you've, you know, been been with him. He seems like an absolute legend. How did you guys meet? So we met through radio. Um, I was doing all my publicity for Bachelorette and Bachelorette. Yeah, Bachelorette. And when they, re- like, announced it, I had to do all the, like, the publicity run and I went into Kiss Radio, which is where he was working at the time. I was on the show and they said, oh, our producers actually uh, applied for your show. They brought him on the screen. They were like, yeah, he's from he's from Broome. He's a Broome boy. Oh, my God. And I thought, oh, my God, he's actually really cute. And I just said he's really cute because I didn't know if he was coming on. I didn't want to be like, you know, playing favourites. Like, yeah. First go. So um, I was like, oh, he's really cute. And then that was it. Like never seen him again. H- hadn't seen him again. And then um, mid Bachelorette airing, I went in for my publicity again and I went to You're like, where the fuck were you? (laughs) You're like, you didn't turn up. (laughs) I, yeah, I realised, I think my publicist was like, oh, that was Sam. He was, he he was going to go on the show, but he didn't get on. I selected, yep. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, he's so cute. Like, he's Yeah, he is cute. Um, anyways, I was in a relationship, super, super happy. And then over the new year, obviously that went to shit, long story short. (laughs) And then I was out to dinner with my other bestie, Paul, and Sammy messaged me saying, Hey, like I live in Melbourne. I've seen what's going on. Hope you're okay. Do you, if you you ever want to go for a walk and catch up for a coffee, like I'm in South Yarra area if you're around type thing, just being super platonic, like slid into my DMs, but it was like super, super platonic, like let's be friends. And then the first day I invited back for a wine and I was like, oh my God, I love this guy. He's like, I'm awesome. He's amazing. And he's been my best friend since January. Oh, I love that. So yeah, that's how I met my best friend, Sam. Okay, what does your own personal hellhole look like? I think you you put a hole in there yourself. <laughs> There's no hole. She's like, get a hole. Uh, what does your own personal hell look like? Um, oh, well. Um, no, ooh. hell hole. Where? Where the, where's the hole? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so for me, oh, my personal, okay. Mm, that, that's a good question your visualization of hell what hell would be or is it your own personal hell inside your brain mm. <coughs> um personal hell i think um you know what is a really bad place for my brain is a hangover <laughs> actually oh i hate I it agree. I, I hate being hungover it is something that um you know one day i'm you're never going to feel that again <laughs> 
It's just, I hate the feeling of waking up feeling seedy, trying to struggle through the emotions and the guilt and just being like yucky inside. I know that there's a chemical imbalance in my body and that my body is in itself. I'm not feeling how I would normally feel. It's just not a vibe. So yeah, it would have to be the feeling of being immensely hungover, which it doesn't happen a lot to me um, because I'm too busy to party often enough but when i when You're i too busy when i when <clears throat> i fucking send it i send it and it's like uh, uh, recovery takes a while yeah um, what um, about you i agree no personal hell would be definitely a hangover or personal hell which i haven't ever got there touch wood mm. is that i have an extreme phobia of vomiting Right, okay. like extreme. Like yep. I, if I feel sick, I will do every single thing possibly not to vomit. Like I would rather it come out the other end than my mouth. Have you ever had Ondansetron? What's that? It's a it's a pill that you put under your tongue if you feel nauseous and you're about to vomit. Oh, and it I've stops had that it. plenty of times yeah. when I had lots of drugs for my when I broke my collarbone. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, a good I one. Lots. And when I had my boobs done. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Um, yeah, so it, my hell would be getting gastro or like something that I'm profusely being sick. Okay. Uh, that would be my hell hole and I'm <laughs> my hell hole. That would be my hell because I obviously have an extreme phobia to it. So it's not something that I would enjoy. Well, let me share something with you. Do you remember when I called you on Saturday night when I was like drunk? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So about... Is this on record or off record? No, on record, for sure. Um, <laughs> it's about like half an hour after that, I vomited all the red wine I was drinking up. It was so gross. <laughs> and then, the, like, I tried to clean it and be subtle. And then the next morning, Paul comes downstairs and he's like, um, did you bleed? Why is there blood everywhere? And I'm like, oh, where, what do you mean? I'm like, there's no blood. He's like, oh, here. And I was like, oh, that's the fucking remnants of the red wine that I had vomited. That's how oh. I got to that level where I vomited. I know. Yeah, what am I, it's, it's, 18 at Splendour in the Grass? You know what? You've had a busy couple of weeks. You sent it. You uh, celebrated hard. Yeah. Um, I wish I was there with you. <laughs> Oh, this is an interesting question, actually. Um, Brooke, have you had hmm. your boobs done? Ooh, I wonder who sent that in. <laughs> <laughs> Some seedy old man. <laughs> no, um, um, awesome. No, you know. I get this all the time, and it's probably my best kept secret. So, yes, I have had my boobs done. I remember when um, you got them done. I haven't had any <laughs> other plastic surgery or, you know, cosmetic stuff done and my boobs I got my boobs done actually just prior to going away for the bachelorette I didn't yeah. purposely get them for the bachelorette obviously but yeah. I got them done and for me I had always had this very like sporty masculine body and I was like I really want boobs nice I never had them I was really like self-conscious of my boobs so I was like fuck it did it hurt I was like, what's the process like it was the most painful, uh, like painful surgery I've ever. Look, I'm literally holding them because I'm oh, triggering the pain. Wow, yeah, it is holy shit. Um, I just I thought it was just like big. popping some silicon in there and then it like healed. It is actually it, well, yeah, basically. But the the cutting open part and the the shoving, I've seen the surgery and how it, not my surgery, what? but I've seen how other surgeries happen, oh, and wow. it's not a. Just a simple, you know, like slotting it in. It's no. a, bit, a bit of tugging. Invasive. Bit of okay, wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that well, hurts my tears. Okay, like in terms that. of any other like cosmetic, you said you haven't had anything else done. So you haven't had Botox or anything like that? No, I haven't wow. touched my absolute You are face. so beautiful. See, black don't crack, baby. Look how beautiful your skin is. Like, and I got big titties now. And so. you, got, you got beautiful titties and a beautiful <laughs> skin. Well, what else could you want? What job do you think you'd be really good at? Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Uh, if if I could, like, just be one thing for the rest of my life, um, and I think that I'd be really good at it, it would be Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> I 
musician, <laughs> entertainer, queen. I you would, want to rule the world? I want, all I really want in this world and in this life is a stage Something. that lifts me slowly with smoke and a light behind me and a microphone like <laughs> this and the crowd screaming my name until... I say one word and then they keep screaming and it's just like this 15 minute intro of the crowd screaming my name. That's all I want. And I think I'd be really good at holding that pose. I think you would be fucking phenomenal and I think that's the best answer I've ever heard. I thought you might be like, oh, I'd be really good at being um, a, teacher. a psychologist because I love caring about people. No, nah, babe, Beyonce nah. is a whole career. That's a whole job. Bravo, yeah. Maddie. Baddie, Maddie. And her album, <laughs> her album, oh my gosh. If you haven't listened to her album, go and listen to it. Okay. Uh, I don't know what I'd be really good at, to be honest. I, I think, think you'd that. be really good at um, being like uh, a teacher. I feel like you've got that sort of that leadership vibe. Like a, oh, like yeah, a I'd young. Be, actually, you know what? I'm young really fucking good teacher. at ruling the country. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I've got experience in all avenues. I reckon I'd be empathetic towards people's needs. If I had, you know, that level of education, you know, like a, a law background, which, you know, it can easily go get if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, I think that I could be really fucking good at ruling the country. Can we insert <laughs> Julia Gillard's misogynist speech in right now? Because I'm picturing that is like you. No, you'd be way better than um, JG. But is that is that a nickname? I just, I just JJ. I think, uh, like... Julia. I don't. I, I'm a people person. I think you know. Yeah. Who knows? In maybe fucking twenty years, Brookie might be r- ruling the country. I actually, in my year twelve mm-hmm. yearbook, um, one of my things was most likely to. My first one was marry a footballer. Lol. Uh, I was like, that's a fucking sexist move, you bitches. Yeah. Um, and the second thing was most likely to go into politics. Oh, so. all politics. I think I think they would love you in politics. <clears throat> I think. I don't be- know if I could go into politics now after talking and outing myself with boobs and dildos. But Babe, in 20 years' time. <laughs> we're all time, about it. <laughs> in 20 years' time, it's going to look very different. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yep. All right. Well, that wraps up our bloody episode of Anonymous Cues and <laughs> Dirty... Days. <laughs> Dirty laundry. We just aired it all out to you, Mob. But thank you so much for listening to Not So PG with me, Maddie Mills. And me, Brooke Blurton. And make sure you rate and review our pod on Apple Podcasts. And Or you can follow us on, on Instagram. IG, Brooke.Blurton or it, at It's Maddie Mills. Oh, and I forgot to say, I um, signed up to OnlyFans this week. Fuck yes. Kidding, guys. Kidding, guys. We'll see you next week. Go sign week. up to his page. <laughs> Bye. Bye.